Welcome back to Breakfast Television. Uh, Chris McCusker joining us once again. I lost my wording. I was going to say that you had a better night's sleep today. Yes, and you did too. Yay. Yay, we did it. Yeah, well, because, <laughs> you know, uh, Mike Apple's off, Melanie Ng is off, so we're filling mm -hmm. in big mm -hmm. shoes, uh, but the sleeping part is a little bit tough. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it, it's not normal. Let's just say it's not normal to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. So, yes. yeah, there is an adjustment period. They're That's definitely the way I would put it. Yeah. But you know what? I love the BT audience, so I'll do it. I, it's I'll worth do it. it. Yeah. It is. And really, for me, once I'm awake, the hardest part of the day is over. That's it. Like, I worry so much about not hearing the alarm or whatever, so that's the <laughs> hardest part of the day. Really? Yeah, I yeah. agree with you. Okay, let's yeah. talk about uh, U.S. markets right now, coming mm -hmm. off the worst day since June, but a rebound in oil. Yes, so the rebound in oil should help the TSX, which also lost ground yesterday, but not nearly as bad as Wall Street. Yes, Wall Street saw steep declines to start the week. The worst day in months. The Dow was down more than 600 points. The Nasdaq slipped by 2.5%, and the Nasdaq was already down by 2% last Friday. So the sell-off... Uh, really got going, let's say, yesterday. And, of course, this is still connected to concerns about rising interest rates and this hawkish talk coming out of the U.S. Federal Reserve ahead of the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium on Friday. Actually, it starts Thursday. We're going to hear from the Fed chair on Friday. We do have U.S. futures markets a little higher this morning, so a partial rebound in the works. The price for oil is right around $92. OPEC Plus is actually talking about cutting production in order to stabilize a volatile market. You sort of read between the lines. OPEC Plus probably not happy that mm. oil prices are this low. And then I have a bonus story for you, Pfizer. We did get earnings in from the first of Canada's big banks. Bank of Nova Scotia missed on third quarter adjusted earnings per share, coming in a penny shy of expectations. Provision for credit losses working out to $412 million. That was below expectations. And revenue worked out to $7.8 billion, which also missed. Now, RBC and National Bank set to report earnings tomorrow, and then CIBC and TD on Thursday. Okay, keeping an eye on that news all mm -hmm. week long. Uh, something else uh, that you have your eyes on, Zoom. We relied so heavily on Zoom during the pandemic. So what's happening with their earnings now? Well, the stock is down 10% in pre-market trade. And this comes after a mixed earnings report from, yes, this company, Zoom, which was once a pandemic darling when we are all forced into our homes. Uh, the company did cut its full year forecast and revenue forecast. And one analyst actually says this morning that the cut may not be conservative enough. The video conferencing website also reported the slowest quarterly revenue growth on record at 8% as people obviously switch to in-person events. And then operating expenses grew by 51% to $704 million. So one analyst this morning describing Zoom as sort of a show me company. Uh, that is to say, you know, show me what you got now that the pandemic is coming to an end. Ooh, yes, show me what you got. Okay, well said. Yeah. Okay, Chris, uh, Game of Thrones fans, mm. billions out there. I'm going to say billions because it <laughs> looks that way every time I open my Twitter. And it seems like, is it the prequel that's drawing in a large audience, too? Yes. So HBO says it is officially the largest audience for a debut of a series. We're talking about 10 million viewers. And this was somewhat illustrated by the fact that HBO's streaming platform crashed. So now officially the largest audience in HBO's history for the debut of a new series. And really it comes at a critical time for the parent company. Discovery and Warner Media, previously controlled by AT&T, combined this past spring to become Warner Brothers Discovery. This company also owns CNN. And really it's been in a cost-cutting and restructuring mode since taking control. So shares in Warner Brothers Discovery slightly higher in pre-market trade. Are you a Game of Thrones fan? I knew Are you, you one gonna, of the billions? Absolutely not. I've never seen no? an episode. I don't think I can ever get into it. I can't get into anything that's not realistic. Yeah, I know? understand that. Yeah. Throw me a rom-com. A rom I'll be there, but Game yeah. of Thrones? I don't know. Chris McCusker. Yeah, Sorry well, I think, I think the two of us might be in the minority on this because yes, uh, so people too. coming out in droves. Uh, yes. Thank <laughs> you so much, Chris. We'll see you tomorrow.